I had a dream. I had a horrible nightmare that I died. And I was in, you know, it was about six in the morning. I'm in bed with my family and everyone's asleep. And I had a dream that I died by some accident. It was an oversight and it was stupidity on my part. And I died and I was looking back at my family and they were grieving and I couldn't return to them because I'd crossed over. And I was, I was like, oh, you idiot. You blew it. And uh, I woke up just like incredibly shaken. And I'm not a doctor. I think that my artery had already started dissecting um, because the following morning I had sort of ongoing pain when I woke up and my, something was wrong and I still didn't go to the doctor. And that afternoon it was a beautiful day and I was going to go running. And I was like, I'm not going to go running. I don't feel quite right. And within about half an hour, thank God I didn't go running. I would have died crawling around in the woods. Then about half an hour, I felt this surge of pain in my abdomen. I was like, Jesus, what is that? And um, flooded my entire abdomen. It, and I was like, damn, that is strange feeling. It wasn't unbearable, but it was, I'd never had that feeling before. And then within a few minutes, I tried to stand up and I almost fell over. My blood pressure apparently was just tanking. And what had happened was the artery, the aneurysm had ruptured and I was bleeding out into my abdomen. And of course, I didn't know this. And I was in the woods with my wife and uh, in a little cabin that I built. And um, she dragged me back out of the woods, uh, me sort of stumbling, and got me to the driveway and put me in the car so I could sit down. And, and I started to go blind. Uh, the sky turned electric white. And that, that started to take over my entire field of vision. And I was syncopic. I was in and out of consciousness. And the paramedics got there. And by the time they got there, I was in something called compensatory shock. And so I was suddenly I sort of revived. I was like feeling OK. And the paramedics were like, you know, well, you're good. We think you dehydrated. It's a hot day. Just sit and drink some water and you'll probably feel better. And I was like, all right, that sounds good. And my wife is like, you know, he went blind a few minutes ago. Like you're taking him to the ER. So they took me to the ER. And about halfway there, I lost And it was lost very bowel. far, right? Yeah, I took them an hour and a half. It was an hour and a half before I got to the ER, right? And um, I lost my bowel control on the way there. And I was like, all right, I went blind for a while and I lost my bowels. Like, that's probably not a good sign. Like, something's wrong. And uh, I got to the ER and the, the medic who I tracked down later, the guy in the back of the ambulance with me, he said, we got to the ER and you just tanked. You turned white as a sheet. Uh and my my hemoglobin was 1.2. And the, the, the ER doctors were like, you can't. I mean, they. I think they'd never that, seen yeah, that's a hemoglobin. Sort of incompatible with life. Yeah, it was. And that's what I was at. I was I they I think I had probably lost about 90 percent of my blood. I mean, I don't know. I was still conscious. I was in and out of How conscious. Much IV fluid had they given you in the ambulance? I just put a bag in my arm. Just a single bag? Maybe a couple, maybe a couple bags. I don't know. But I got to the ER and I was 1.2. My blood pressure was 60 over 40. And the doctor asked permission to cut into my neck, to put a line into my neck. I think it would be my carotid or my jugular. jugular. I don't know. Jugular. Okay. And I said, I mean, in case there's an emergency, I had no idea I was dying. And I said, in case there's an emergency, he was like, this is the emergency right now. I was like, yeah, you got permission. So we started cutting my neck, you know, whatever they do. And, uh, and then I start. Then that, and I, and basically that was when I died. I started to die. So my, a big black pit opened up underneath me, and I started to get pulled down into it. And um, and I said to the doctor, "You got to hurry. You're losing me right now." Did Did you say that, or did you think that? I said that to him. I said, "Doc, you got to hurry. You're losing me right now. I can feel myself going." And then my dead father appeared. Now I just want to stop and say, I'm an atheist. My father was a physicist. I'm not religious. I'm not a supernaturalist. I'm not a mystic. I don't believe in anything I can't measure and can't test, right? And my father was the same way. And he appeared above me and a kind of presence. And he was, he seemed to be welcoming me, right? And I wanted to have nothing to do with him. And it wasn't a conversation. It was a communication. And he wasn't I couldn't see him. I could feel him. He was a presence. And I was like, basically, not now, dad. Like, I don't want to have anything. I love you, but I don't want to have anything to do with you right now. I want to, you know, I'm staying. I want to stay here. I have nothing to do with what, you know, that 
whatever that is. And how long uh, earlier had your dad passed away? Uh, nine years earlier. And you were with him when he died, if I recall. I was holding his hand. Yeah. Um, and, um, so, you know, I have a very spotty memory after that. I remember the doctor saying to the, to the, um, whoever was pushing me, um, go as fast as you can without running, without actually running, go as fast as you can, I think was to the cath lab. And, um, do you remember them putting the breathing tube in your mouth? I can't remember if I remember or not. Um, I was in and out of consciousness. I remember they put me in a CAT scan, right? And they get, and they had to, um, uh, they, you know, they had to, they had to shave me. They, they, they put a line in my groin, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, and, uh, and I wanted to joke with them. I was like, I was, I, I almost said, I'm sorry. I forgot to shave down there this morning. Right. I was, I was trying to make them laugh for some reason. I don't know. Like a very wacky, like sensibility. And, uh, and they put a line in my groin and they put, and I think they had trouble seeing where the bleed was. Cause I had so much blood in, I'd been bleeding into my abdomen for an hour and a half. Right. And, um, Luckily, I'm a long distance runner. I got a good heart. I mean, the doctor said if you weren't in really top shape, you would have just died. You would have died. You would have gone into cardiac arrest and your kidneys would have failed and it would have been over. And um, it took them another eight hours to find the leak. Um, I mean, I was on the fluoroscope for so long that I got radiation burns on my back. Two weeks later, the square red patch appeared on my back because I had so much radiation. And I remember at one point the doctors looking at each other like, and I know this kind of thing is very hard to fix. And it was in the middle of the night in a small hospital on Cape Cod, Hyannis Hospital. And I remember the doctors looking at each other and literally were like, what do we do? Like, we can't find it. Like, what do we do? And I remember thinking, oh, guys, tell me you don't tell me. I just didn't see that exchange. And uh, but the, they, they were heroes. Man. They pulled it off. They finally found it. And they, they embolized it with ca catheter emb embolism. And they gave me 10 units of blood. I, I wound up getting 10 units of blood. And they saved my life. How long were you in the ICU? Uh, five days. Do you remember much of that? Oh, yeah. I woke up the next morning. Um, and I had no idea that I'd almost died. And uh, the, the nurse came in and um, experienced nurse, you know, in her 50s or 60s, maybe even. And... Uh, and she said, listen, you almost died yesterday. You're, you are the luckiest guy we, any of us know, like you should have died. We can't believe you survived that. Like, and, uh, um, I was horrified. You know, I have these two little girls and I was absolutely traumatized by that news. I had no idea I almost died. And I thought about it. I sat there, I was throwing up blood pretty regularly. I don't know how the blood got into my stomach, but it did. And, and, uh, um, and, and, uh, she came back an hour later and said, hey, how are you doing? And I said, I lied. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay physically, but honestly, I'm not struggling with what you told me. It's terrifying that you can almost die in your own, in front of your family, in your own driveway when you're a very healthy person on a nice June day. Like, are you kidding? That can happen? Like, I don't have heart problems. I don't have anything. Like, you can just, you can, the universe can just take you out. And uh, I was like, totally traumatized by that. And she said, try thinking about that as a sacred experience rather than a scary experience. And then she walked out of the room and I've been thinking about that my whole life. Like, yeah, I was given a glimpse of the mystery, you know, the great mystery of death. And I was given a, I was allowed to look at it and allowed to survive the look at it. And I brought, got brought back. And then I started to do some research. I mean, first of all, I can't tell you how traumatizing that whole thing was. Combat's nothing compared to that. That really messed me up. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.
Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 